Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. And this is my very special guest. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jill O'Lantern. This is our review of Stephen King's It, the 2017 version of the story from the classic Stephen King novel. I give the movie a minus. Jill O'Lantern, what do you give the movie? I give the movie an A. We saw the movie in a regular movie theater, and we also saw it in one of the 4D experience movie theaters. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, about how that experience was as well. Normally we list like two, three, maybe even four things we liked about the film, then two, three, four things that we did like to make it nice and even. But in this case, we both love this movie pretty much top to bottom. So our dislikes are more personal uh, things. Uh, the movie is excellent, as you can tell by our grades. So uh, we only have like two complaints, but they're really minor. Uh, and then we're going to talk about praising this movie probably left and right. <laughs> so the big thing uh, that we didn't like was just the character balance. Uh, personally, uh, I felt that I, there were points where I forgot who Stan was at the beginning of the story. I was like, who are you? Who are you? And then Richard, I went, oh yeah, you're the Jewish kid who was nervous about uh, doing this thing. And then when he's talking with his friends, it's like, I see a woman, she's all messed up. I'm like, what? what are you talking about? I thought the leper was, I thought the leper was Eddie. Oh, that uh, old painting woman. It's like, I don't remember that. Uh, what did you think about the character balance in the movie? Well, poor Stan, if you're familiar with the story of it, the book or, or the original film, you know that maybe it's a good thing that we don't get too attached to Stan, but I agree with the character development and, and I think there's just time constraints there. The movie itself was already over two hours, is a good two hours and 15 minutes. And to have such a large cast of pretty much everyone wanting to give them equal time, I think, and wanting to give them equal importance, except Bill, of course, Bill being the main character. I, I really just think they ran out of time with the development of the characters. And I, I would have liked to see more of Henry Bowers and that story, Henry Bowers and his gang. But again, how long did we want this movie to be? It didn't feel like it was over two hours because it was so good, but they do have to keep it within movie theater. Or with me, with Mike, there were periods where, like, Mike has this great introduction with his grandfather, this <laughs> fantastic scene, and then he's just gone for the rest of, like, third of the movie. Then he, he does meet up with this uh, great scene of uh, throwing rocks at Harry Bowers and things like that. But then he has a, a, a line where it's like, my grandfather says there's only, like, there's one thing making everything bad. I was like, really? Your grandfather seemed like a total, total no-nonsense kind of guy. I would have liked to have seen that conversation. And even yeah. after uh, they were in the house and they all decided to split up and disband, like my, he says, my grandfather's right. I'm an outsider. I got to stay out of this. Like, is that, so that's why you're a homeschooler? Is that, he was like, he, he, I totally forgot that Mike was in the team, especially since uh, we had that wonderful scene with all the boys and Beverly at the quarry. And they're hanging out. They're learning about each other and they're having fun. Mike comes at the, at the at the end, most likely. So right. some minor complaint, but still was like. Eh. Well, and I loved Mike. I loved Mike in this movie. I love the character of Mike, and it is it is true to the story that he joins the group at the end, and he is homeschooled, so he is a little bit of a outsider, even in the Losers Club. I think from the beginning, but in the original, we saw Mike in that historian role, which is is truer to the book, and that he had the old photos and things, and it, it makes me wonder especially when they went back with those, well, my grandfather said this, my grandfather said that. How many of those scenes did they film and they just got cut yeah. for time or something like that? I would like to have seen more of that story. I liked Ben as the historian as well, just because it gave Ben another card to play, yeah. if you will, but we just we just wanted more. Yeah, we wanted more yeah. from or, the or kids. Or just have Mike come into the house. That was, that was another thing. It's like When I watched the movie again, I realized, the friends that joined Bill in the house are the same friends, Richie and uh, Eddie, that we've been following for the whole movie. So again, I forgot Mike was now part of the group. So when we see them again, like fighting Pennywise, they're all scared. I was like, oh yeah, Mike, you're here too. I forgot. <laughs> so, you know, keep Eddie in there so he gets his arm hurt. He had that great scene with the mom, but, you know, we should toss in Mike or... Or, or even you want Richie in there, toss in the mic also, so he gets a real moment. Don't get rid with of Richie, he's my favorite. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't, I, even after seeing the movie a second time, I couldn't stand being around Mike, uh, I mean Richie, but. One of the things that I did, I guess would be a dislike about the film, 
was a couple of iconic things from the original and some even from the book that they left out of the movie. And again, whether it was time restraints or just different character choices and we in 2017, people just in general are more difficult to scare than they were at the time of the first movie. So of course they had to amp up the scare factor, but the shower scene with Eddie is just so iconic and one of my favorites. And I wish that that would have been included but I did love The Leper with Eddie, and again, that's from the book. But Beep Beep Richie, why was that cut out of the film? I had my Beep Beep Richie shirt on she in the was theater. Looking forward to it for a and week. I know that's from the book, and I understand maybe it was more appropriate to the time period and the setting with the Roadrunner and that sort of thing of the 1950s from the first one. And I'm so glad that Pennywise said it, as soft as it was, it was a nod to all of those out there those of us that were looking for it, but I really wish that would have been in there in addition to all of the cursing and shut up Richie and that sort of thing, which is the way that guys that age talk to each other. But so he says, and I believe, but oh, I, I wanted some, some more beep beep Richie. But otherwise I think the choices they made were good. I just wish they wouldn't have left some things like that. It felt left out. All right, now for the good stuff, and definitely we got to talk about the acting, the acting from this entire cast, top to bottom, uh, all seven kids of uh, Henry Bowers, and of course, Peely Wise. This is top-notch acting, phenomenal, perfect cast, so great. You almost wish you could, like, like uh, wait until uh, these kids are growing up to have these same actors do this again if they say it's exactly. still. And I think that uh, in the future, uh, Pennywise, uh, Bill Skarsgård, and Pennywise, uh, Tim Curry are going to be argued like uh, Joker, uh, Jack Nicholson, and Joker Heath Ledger. It's mm -hmm. like they are so well done, so excellent stand on each other. I mean, the acting is phenomenal in this movie. I completely agree. And Bill Skarsgård, I was I was blown away because Tim Curry can do no wrong in my eyes. Everything he does is brilliant. I'm a huge fan. And I just couldn't imagine to be Bill Skarsgård and to get that phone call. Hey, how would you like to reprise an iconic Tim Curry role? Like, what do you say to that? But I really appreciated an interview I saw with him where he said, I'm going to do my own version of the character. No one can do Tim Curry like Tim Curry. Absolutely, of course not. And again, it is a creepier, scarier, more intense version of Pennywise, which I think suited today's audience as well. What an amazing take on the character. And also the kids, just like you were saying, such phenomenal acting from not children, but young people. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I was a little bit worried about, because like I said earlier, Richie is my favorite character. And I'm also a huge Stranger Things fan. And as I'm sure everybody knows, uh, the actor who plays Mike Wheeler in Stranger Things is also the actor that plays Richie Tozier in It, Finn Wolfhard. And... I was floored. He must be a great actor. I buy him as Mike Wheeler and I bought him as Richie Tozier and those characters could not be more different. Yeah. So huge kudos to you. Yeah, I hate the Richie character because like <laughs> I didn't hang out with guys like that. I, I'm, they, they exist, but I didn't hang out with guys like that. And for some reason, I would have to be in a situation like that. Even as grown-ups, I would have like, stop! For five minutes, was everything foul, you know, be out of my super healthy be, be foul. Richie. I mean, it's like 10, five minutes, man. Just say, so let's, let's just have a conversation that doesn't involve something lewd because, you know, you're probably trying to conversate with something. You're trying to, try to, to stand out, you know, uh, more than what you actually are. And I don't mean that way. Just in general, <laughs> when, lots of times when, when people brag, especially guys, is to conversate that they aren't having whatever they're bragging about. So the constant, 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 <laughs> oh, I couldn't stand Richie, but he uh, acted beautifully, acted perfectly, but as a, as I would not be with that person in real life unless I actually had to fight some type of monster. Or but you believed it. You <laughs> believed that's who he oh, really yeah, was. Oh yeah, I, I believe he's, he's a, <laughs> the young man is, is on a roll right now. I hope he has a great long career, but yeah, uh, uh, I'm not looking forward to Richie in the next <laughs> chapter. <laughs> Something else that I really loved about this movie was that it was not reliant on jump scares. 
which to me, being such a big horror fan, jump scares are a cheap scare. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, every movie needs them and, mm-hmm. and the, the audience loves them. They but are, And they are in the movie. They're I mean, definitely, yeah, definitely, would, definitely some you jump really scares. You can't have a, a horror movie without a jump scare. It's like standard. <laughs> but you also got to have that creep factor that when you go home, you're still thinking about the movie. Mm-hmm. That's that's where the real the real terror comes in for me. And there was so much of that in this. Just so many little nuances of things happening in the background that even the main characters on the screen didn't notice that was just for us as the audience. So creepy. Pennywise, his eyes, he had one watching the audience the whole time and one watching whatever character he was speaking to. But there was so much of that creep factor that I think the jump scares even caught us more off guard because they weren't so plentiful. I thought it was very well done horror. Now, one of the things I like, there are so many things in the book that I'm glad they don't have, like the mystical turtle outer space thing. There are references to the turtle. Like, I, this is Which crazy. Is nice but it's like, for the hardcore I, 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 I don't know where a turtle, <laughs> I don't know what King is was thinking with the mystical turtle. I don't know what he's thinking with having the kids even set up a smoke room or hallucinating room doing drugs or what. I mean, sure, it takes place in the 50s, but it's about to lead to a 60s. But still, it's like, no. And, Absolutely, I was thankful there wasn't some type of child gangbang. I was like, because like in the book, what they wind up all having sex. I was like, what do you mean? There's, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and like in the book, is Beverly the, the school slut or has a reputation of the school slut in the books or something? Not until that point in time where that happens, and it's it's a, a unity thing to give everyone bravery and encouragement yeah. to find their way out of the sewers. But yeah. even Stephen King has said that. If he would write the book again, he would omit that part right. from the book. Well, anyway, I'm just glad it's not there. Now, you know, just as this movie amped up the horror and amped up the cursing because the miniseries, which is excellent, it was made in 1990, so it was limited to what you can say on TV. There's certainly limited to what you can show on TV as far as blood and violence. And you talk about children, there's definitely limits on that. And you even had commercial breaks to deal with along with whatever censors you were dealing with on the network. So is this, it's a hard R, it's scary, it's right from the get-go, you know, fearful, but still it's like, even though I take a lot from the book and it's great, I don't want to see some crazy mystical turtle. I don't want the kids doing some type of smoke drugs, and I definitely don't want some underage orgy. I don't I, I don't want that. You know, next generation when they do the remake and say, "Hey, let's go by the book." No, keep that out, please. <laughs> okay, so as Jill Lantern mentioned earlier, we saw the movie in a 4DK experience. A 4DK theater uh, has seats that move along with the movie. Uh, there's some wind effects and some water effects and some air pressure effects. And it can be a really great experience to enhance the film or could distract. Now, I saw the movie in the 4DK theater first and then in a regular theater. She saw it in a regular theater and then in the 4DK with me. So how do you feel about the 4DK experience and do you think it distracted or enhanced your experience? Well, since I saw it first in the regular theater, I definitely think it enhanced my experience. I loved it. It felt like we were really there. It was raining on us when it was raining on Georgie and the wind was blowing through the trees and the seats were synced up to jump with jump scares and even I mean, air effects with Beverly's hair. It was, I thought it was, it was a phenomenal experience, but I, I can see how it might have taken away if it was your first time seeing it, which I, what you're going to say, I have a feeling. Yes, that's, that's exactly the case because it's a suspense movie and you don't know what's gonna happen. Even though I've seen like the original film, it's like, and I have an idea what's gonna happen, I don't know. And there's certain moments like when Pennywise like lunges, he does that, uh, 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 lunges. and it's like, your chairs are shaking. And like, I'm somebody who's scared at that time, not, <laughs> so I'm laughing while I'm somebody who's scared, that's messes him up. Or that scene with Henry Bowers is in uh, the field after his uh, dad scared him with a gun mm-hmm. and the wind kicks up. And so the air machine started coming on, and I was like, okay, something cool going to happen, or is this just making it windy? And why is it just making it windy, but it's distracting me? And the jump scares, or harbor scares, uh, because of suspense, your, your body is naturally a little more alert to danger, and there'll be times when the seat would just a split second before the jump scare would buzz, 
So I'm alerted subconsciously that a scare was about to happen, and the scare would happen. So it got to the point where it was like, okay, I'm loving this movie so much. Please stop moving my chair. Speak to chair. Let me enjoy this movie. That so that shows how great this movie is. Is that it's so great? Like I'm tired of the seats. Like I, I'm tired of 40k spirits. Now if I see a movie, an action movie, it'd be perfect for action movie for a first time viewing. But I think if you're going to do 40k with suspense or horror, see it regular first, then 40k. Uh, but if it's just action or drama or thing like that, go on with the 40k. But yeah, we both loved it. But it was like for me, it was a distraction. For her, it was enhancing. Okay, so that's our thoughts on Stephen King's movie, It, the 2017 version of the film. Once again, I give the experience a minus, and Joel Lantern? I give it an A. And we both enjoy the 4DK experience, but for me, seeing the first time was distraction, where it was enhancement. It's awesome. All right, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Jill and Andrew, for joining me for this review. Do you have any final thoughts to share? Well, I'm just really excited about the sequel coming very soon, I hope. I'm excited to see which of the adult actors they're going to cast for the, the children roles. or the roles that they've made so iconic now as the children. And careful of the sewers. <laughs> and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.